Hello guys, this is Goodlike, and we're back to Let's Code. I did a little bit of work and uh, decided I'm at a good stopping point because we've wrapped up one of the stories. So I thought, heck it, I'll, I'll record this, then the next one will have probably a lot more work done. It's mostly because I don't really want to get started on the next one and then, you know, half hour it because it's quite late at this point, as you can see. So let's take a look at what did I do. So first things first, you can see on Saturday, I did a little bit of cleanup. Uh, I don't quite recall everything, but I believe I moved some packages. Uh, yeah, just moved some packages. Rename, uh, moved out the title or whatever class and renamed the parameter title because who cares, right? No, it's just whatever. Then did a little bit of cleanup inside the actual classes. In a lot of cases, I was doing a lot of checks inside this class. For example, the title would have had to be specifically not blank. But when I thought about it, I decided that it's a little bit overkill to like check for everything and then inside of it i mean if you're using this api more than likely you're not gonna screw up it's very unlikely you would screw up and in the cases where it is maybe possible we have like here uh you know if you forget the object and you just put the title we have fail safes around that so we reduced the paranoia of our code just just a little bit yeah, this, 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 as you can see, this, also the interface is now public because I thought I don't care if you use a method or a lambda anymore because we no longer have to force this check. And yeah, I also renamed these instead. So they're a bit more simple rather than otherwise. And. I believe I had to clean up these tests because, of course, after I removed all those checks, a lot of these would start failing because they expected the checks. So that's nice. Same thing here. If you're using this, more than likely you're going to make a reasonable assertion. So what, what's the point in checking it? The odds that this is going to be a problem are very slim, but it adds a lot of overhead of this, like, you have to put this in every method. And then you have to make sure when you pass this in that you didn't screw up and so on. It's just, it's just not worth it, in my opinion. And this is relatively recent opinion, so <laughs> whatever. But as you can see, then I had a two-day break. What happened? So my computer went bonkers. I think when I installed uh, uh, the new hard drive that I purchased recently, I must have nudged something just a little bit in the wrong way or whatever because uh, it would just start to intermittently shut itself down completely as if the power was cut but not quite i don't know maybe also it could have been just uh some connector being shitty or whatever but what i did is uh essentially take most of the things out of the computer get rid of uh, most of the dust replug almost every wire not literally every wire, because some of them were just too annoying to get to. For example, I didn't remove uh, anything with the fan that's on the CPU, because there's no point. <laughs> I'd have to do a lot more work if I did that. And I don't even have necessary things. Like, I, I don't think I would have anything to clean the CPU with, and then I have to look for the paste and so on and so forth. Long story short, I've cleaned it up. It it looks like some kind of alien object now because it doesn't have all the dust on it anymore. Great. And uh, it uh, doesn't intermittently shut down itself whenever I press Shift F10. You want some proof? Yeah, here we go. We'll do it right here, right now. There, I press Shift 10. It didn't shut down. To be fair, I don't know what it was causing it. It wasn't always a Shift 10. It could just be sitting here and just completely crash from watching a youtube video or doing some background stuff uh i don't know doesn't matter it seems to have worked now so today i finally had some time to get to work again on this so what 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 did i do so i started by implementing a basic main mechanism for channel search 
So the idea is simple. I took our main that was doing nothing and created an actual main that does something. This is the basic principle. You know, we just main main run. It's in a try with resources because our main implements are the closable because we, in the main, we create some things that we want to shut down after we're done and it's best to do that. So it's a good practice and then everything works just fine if you follow the good practices and then in the run it does the main loop which is print out channel search and then perform search for every line that we read from input for every search that we find we print result of course i only did one here at the start i don't know why <laughs> so yay it works doesn't it no it doesn't i ran and the first test immediately reported to me that obviously quote quote a limit exceeded because we don't actually add a fucking api key so we needed to add it somehow to our url and it was not inside the youtube channel search because we don't want to like i said i don't want to inject into every single goddamn class that uses youtube that seems stupid instead what we are doing is we're using uh, the fact that we're using okhttp which provides an api for you to intercept http requests i don't know if such an api is provided with any other mechanism but I know it's provided with OKHTTP, and that's one of the reasons why I wanted to use this. Because I know this mechanism, I know how it works. And it's really simple. Uh, yeah, interceptor, basically, you get a chain, and you need to get give a response. To get a response, you just proceed with some sort of request. The chain also contains a request from, let's say, a previous call to proceed, or whatever, if it's a long chain. So all that we do here is take requests from the chain, we do something with it, and then we proceed with the request. And that's basically how your interceptors for OKHTTP work. And this interceptor appends the API key if it's missing. How does it do it? We check if the API key is already in a URL, this one, and if it's there, then there's no point in doing anything else. We can just proceed with the request as it is, otherwise we append the key. The reason I don't want to replace the key is because I assume that if someone sends the URL with the key, they know what they're doing, they don't need anything else. I can't imagine where that would be the case, but it, I like to handle edge cases like that. It's, it's, it's then that they don't come bite you back in the ass, because they just work. And let me be honest, if I put an API key myself in a URL, I would expect that API key to be used rather than some random class God knows where overriding it and then ruining my day. The appending is done obviously by adding a query parameter to the URL, which needs to rebuild the URL and then rebuild the request. It's a little bit, it's a little bit convoluted, but eh, that's, that's what happens when you use builders in your classes. See? It gets a bit convoluted to change things. Because you probably shouldn't be changing them much. I don't know. Maybe they should have thought this through better. Maybe you should provide a better API. Who knows? I don't. Anyway, after that is done, we add the public API key, the same one we used in the API spike, and uh, we add the interceptor. So you see, instead of just building a client default, you need to use a builder and add an interceptor this way, and then this interceptor will be added to presume any default interceptors, if any, and bam, wham, you've got it. Now every single thing that passes through will have the API key in it. I went back to read the story, actually, and I realized that we actually had very specifically said that we should be able to somehow decide what the max results are and have a default of 13. Exactly. I don't know why, uh, you know, 13, it's because they could like 13, so that was just a number I picked randomly. But that wasn't too big, and, uh, yeah, I, I don't know why we even care to specify it, but it makes sense, you know? However, this revealed on to me a truth, a truth that was beyond surprising, and that is, it returns the same channel multiple times. Yes, let's run our main and you'll see what I mean. It's a very basic application right now. You just get channel search, 
and you enter the search query. If we do the good like 13, I wonder what will we get? Oh, look at that! 13 the good like 13s! I mean, you're not wrong! <laughs> it's just... It's just weird. Uh, also, because we're using IntelliJ IDEA, it treats this as text, so you can just uh, click on this and it will open it in the website. But you know what my channel is, so there's no point in doing that. But yeah, the reason I noticed this was because I actually started writing tests and then I noticed, oh, look at that, the same channel many times. And I have no idea why. I'm sure there's an explanation. Probably there is, but uh, the way I see it, it's not a big deal. Our story did not, in fact, say that these results have to be unique, only that there has to be 13 of them. <laughs> or whatever number you selected, and we don't select this as the default main. So, I don't know. I mean, that seems pretty stupid, but uh, I'm not going to look into it right now, because more than likely, once we actually get a lot more information from the channel, maybe we'll figure it out. Maybe there's some meaning to this duplication, though. The fact that I got 13, the good like 13s, is, is, is a little bit suspicious, but whatever. Let's not go there. Let's 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 do a bit of a check. Let's code. I'm not on there. I'm not surprised in the least. In the least, but okay. With this, we have in fact completed the first user story, and we're gonna get to the second user story now, which is to do something similar, but with playlist and its videos. And we're not going to use search, we're going to use an ID. Oh. You'll see, you'll see. I don't know if we're going to get it done in the next episode, uh, but uh, it's not impossible because I'm going to sit down and uh, probably do a lot of it in one setting. Yeah, the reason why our sprint took so long to even get the first story done was because there was a lot of pre-work. A lot, a lot of pre-work. I mean... We're two-thirds in, we just finished the first story, sort of. If you recall, we had a lot of steps, including getting Git set up, getting Gradle set up, putting all of this project into the uh, Git repository in GitHub, and uh, that took at least more than, I would say, probably half the fucking sprint. And early on, we also were still doing live recordings, which were horseshit, and also barely accomplished anything because they were horseshit. Because they were 30 minutes of live recording. That's horseshit. So, um, I prefer this a lot. And, uh, I'm not actually gonna go do some work uh, now. In fact, uh, the main reason I'm recording right now is because I don't want to do any more work. So if I've recorded it and edited it, then it will be too late. So that's my life hack for this video but next time i can now sit down and i know what i'm going to be working on and by the way if you give it an empty query it stops just in case you were wondering and with that i think i'm done for today thank you guys for watching and i'll see you later